All right, well, just a short video today to play catch up with anything learnt from new information about the Alien TV series. That is to be released next year in 2025. I would also urge anyone interested in the topic to check out my deep dive video into everything we know about the show so far. I'll leave a link in the description for you, of course. Now, I feel like in the tense build up to Alien Romulus, it's easy for the fact that they are making a live action TV series to fall off people's radar. Yes, we are receiving another prequel in the form of a long format episodic story, and this one will be set three to four years before the events of Prometheus in 2089, which is the earliest we've ever gone in an Alien franchise, I do believe. I'm looking forward to Romulus mainly for the level of production that comes with big movies, which hopefully will include some clever directing and script work. Fingers crossed. But when it comes to the Alien show, I may be more inclined to say that this is where I'm pulling all of my hopes and wishes for an experience that has the power to sink in and gestate, leaving a lasting impression that only matures and gets better as the show progresses. It may be time we start to recognise that there could be some strength in the possibility of artistic quality in the Alien IP moving forward. Ooh, I can hear the angry voices already. But hear me out, we know that Romulus, at the very least, looks exciting enough. We'll have to wait until August for positive or negative confirmation on its story and performances, of course. But if we focus on the Alien TV show created by Noah Hawley for the studio FX, the overall picture is starting to feel a bit more tangible in my mind as Hawley has been feeding us breadcrumbs for a while now. And add to that his more recent comments that I'll get into in just a second. Let's say I'm feeling confident about how things might be shaping up for the series. I won't go too into detail about the show here as my linked video in the description has everything else you need to know based on current information. But there are a couple of recent quotes from the show creator that do need addressing. Firstly, the filming will be completed in July as it then heads into the post-production phase and following that will be the very extensive visual effects work. I imagine there will be a hefty amount of VFX needed for the show as it is set in a future Earth with big open environments and the strong possibility of a few off-world locations we would assume. If we look at the highlighted parts of the discussion for which Noah Hawley was the focus on the Deadline podcast, the first piece of good news is that the studio seems to be already pushing for a second season, and not only that, it may also be back to back if we read the first quote. They're saying maybe don't do two things at once on this show because their hope is to put a season two as close to season one as possible. Well, that's good news when you consider in recent years it's become very common practice to have to wait an extra year or sometimes more for some of the biggest shows out there. I realised first we had Covid and then the endless industry strikes that struggle to find a resolution to this day. But I like to believe the studio knows they have a talented director, writer and producer in Noah Hawley. And more than likely, what they have so far has impressed them. Hawley has already proven himself to many people with his Fargo series, so he's no rookie behind the camera. The second comment I'll just throw into the conversation quickly as I know it will make some people very happy is that, by all accounts, Ridley Scott is not involved at all, even though he is an executive producer. Hawley said that he was initially collaborating with him during the very early stages, but after that, no input, zilch. This does reaffirm what I've been adamant about in my previous reporting on the show, which has more to do with the claim Hawley made early on about the creative process involved in bringing this world to life being his and his alone. This is exactly what the IP needs right now, new faces and fresh ideas. Not old names trying to take the franchise in bold directions, whilst in the process, trampling over the wonderful mysteries that helped create the original films in the first place. This might have been fine perhaps if those recent films had more believable characters and were allowed to finish wherever it was headed. The third quote is a good one, it's interesting to say the least, and something I didn't believe was ever going to be allowed if you catch my meaning. He says, what I said to Ridley is, I'm adapting your movie, I had to make a decision, retrofuturism or Prometheus, and I chose retrofuturism. When I close my eyes and you say alien to me, I see the green ASCII text, I hear that sound, I see the keyboard with the weird Egyptian runes on it, I see those hallways. Now, bear in mind that most of this show will take place on Earth. How incredible will it be to see this iconic style of aesthetics very much in use and part of the scenery? 
as opposed to only being resigned to the interior decoration of an interstellar cargo hauler. We just got to see this retro-futuristic technology back on full display in the Romulus trailer, albeit a heavy mix of the first two films, which is the very idea of it. But as much as I prefer this artistic vision of a fictional future, much more than the clinical look of Prometheus, I just had these visions of Wayland personnel desperately trying to finish deadline reports on those time-consuming and absurdly bulky keyboards, <laughs> smashing away to get finished before the working day was over. Hawley is right though, when you close your eyes and think alien, you think either H.R. Giga's manifestation from his nightmares, or you visualise that vintage sci-fi appearance to everything in the ship that pretty much reflects what the vision was of the future in the 70s. I'd also be very curious to know if any part of the show has been influenced by the organic and biomechanical designs from the seminal film. If we catch wind of this nearer the time, then at least we could interpret this to mean that the space jockey's ancient tech may have been discovered sooner than we realised. Noah Hawley, when asked if there was any connection to Alien Romulus, replied by saying that there was nothing intentional from both Fede and Hawley. Both projects are being managed by different parts of 20th Century Studios, and both creatives have been left to work on their respective fields. My thoughts on this are that surely somebody must be working on continuity and cohesion relating to both projects within their biggest IP, right? You would assume. At least being far enough apart, at a point where Ripley hasn't even been born yet, fewer issues might arise, I suppose. But this segues into the last piece of news quite nicely, as he spoke about fleshing out a history far more detailed than that of Ridley's prequels. This was always going to be expected from a show that may be comprised of 8-10 episodes a season, but the part of the conversation that inspired some positive thoughts for me was how he announced the issue of tackling what the sole focus of Prometheus and Covenant were. He says, rather than David creating bioweapons that were made 10 minutes ago, the xenomorphs featured in the series will be the result of millions of years of evolution. How do you guys feel about hearing this? I cannot be the only one excited now, right? There are several reasons for me feeling this way if I'm honest. I never fully adopted the idea that the space jockey was an engineer from the prequels. I have no issue with the existence of engineers, but I see them as something that came after whatever the biomechanical life form fused into the pilot chair was on board the derelict. This will always be the biggest mystery in the history of cinema for me, as I highly doubt anyone will ever do it justice by trying to explain it. Hawley wishing to expand the history and ultimately the lore of the Xenomorph by suggesting they potentially extend millions of years further back than the hubristic idea that they were created by David is a big positive for sure. For this reason, I am very much looking forward to finding out how this show will connect some of the dots here. How will the company discover the alien when we are four years before the events of Prometheus? Will it be via another ancient alien vessel inspired by the mind of Giga? Or does the company find them in a natural sense, perhaps populating a newly surveyed moon or planet? I'll leave it there folks, otherwise I'll just end up rambling and speculating forever. But let me know if this news makes you a little more intrigued while we patiently wait for 2025. Personally, I'm starting to anticipate the Alien show is becoming a bit of a big deal the closer we get. Thanks for watching, over and out folks.